if a pen and a paintbrush had to fight, who of them would win? Let's find out. Hi, what's up? Here's the thing. Originally, I'm not a painter at all. I used to sketch with a pen or pencil on a scrap of paper and was happy about this. I didn't dig color or paints and I only tried my first watercolor a year ago. In my head, those techniques don't clash, they coexist and both produce a very catchy art. But if we ask ourselves which one is better, the answer is simple, they must not fight. An artist has to use them both and as a result produce a new technique called line and wash. This technique shines in illustrations of many artists, and for me it works best with urban scenes. See for yourself. Today I will create a street scene from Burberry in Gloucestershire in England. Some people think it's one of the most iconic English villages out there. I think it's perfect for our goal. Even though drawing directly with a pen is very satisfying, I start with a pencil sketch. Many people think you have to use some fancy pencil for sketching. It may be true for portrait drawing, for the whole composition made in pencil. For mere sketching, I use the single B pencil. This scene demonstrates perfectly how the street follows perspective. The farther the houses on the street and the streets itself goes, the thinner the lines and the smaller objects become. Now, when I'm happy with my pencil sketch, I pale it down with my eraser and start with the pen lines. I picked a 0.3 mm fine liner and perform most of the underdrawing with it. Without changing the width of the fine liner, it's harder, but I try to follow perspective and think down the strokes the farther I go down the street. Note that I don't try to be precise with my strokes and deliberately make them little shaky and interrupted. It adds to the look of the drawing and makes it look more handmade and expressive. I'm adding fine details here and there, but later you will see why it's not critical if I miss some of the sketch details now. The lines part is done, now it's time for washes. I fill the areas I defined with a sketch with diluted impressions of the colors that will be defined better with more watercolor layers added later. Drying the areas a little bit to prevent creating backgrounds when I apply next layers of painting.
that the same way I followed the linear perspective, now I'm following the air perspective as well. The farther down the street I go, the bleaker the tones become, and the more colder blues I add to them. I'm adding more and more layers, defining each surface and the spot better. I'm also trying to not forget about the tonal levels. Remember, the farther from you the object stands, the paler and colder it looks. With every stroke of my brush, the scene is revealed more and more, like an old photograph being developed with chemicals. I've done most of my painting with a single calligraphy brush, now I'm taking another one. It's also a calligraphy brush, but it's made messy with extensive use. I use this brush to paint messy grass and foliage from time to time. Now, the watercolor part of the scene is done. Most of the areas is rather dry, as you can see, but it's very important to let it dry completely now. Be patient, even though it's hard at times. Time for fixing those small details I haven't done with my fine liner before. I use a slightly thinner pen. And of course the signature, since my white marker I use for light accents and signatures over dark areas has depleted, I chose to make the signature on the lightest area down the picture I could find. And the scene is ready now. We can get rid of the masking tape and admire it.
Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you can see that paintbrush and a fine liner can work together perfectly. Try it yourself, it's really enjoyable. See you again next week.